just to give you an idea, these were infected bats and their wings have completely healed and they're basically clean. And most of the bats from this group had quite a lot of infection in their wings. Ooh, keep an eye on him. <laughs> One of the ideas we have is that it's not about eradicating the fungus. At this point, that's essentially impossible. Um, but what you can do is if you delay the severity of that disease from, from peaking in, say, January uh, to peaking in March, a larger portion of that population is likely to be able to survive and recover on their own. My role is in the development of the Rhodococcus bacteria as the treatment. The Rhodococcus was originally investigated at Georgia State University for a litany of different industrial applications and its ability to delay the ripening of fruits and vegetables. That also, the fruits and vegetables had lower fungal burdens. And so I thought that if this bacteria can prevent mold from growing on a banana, perhaps it can prevent mold from growing on a bat. Fungus actually, after it invades the surface of their wings and gets under the epidermis, it gets into the deeper layers of tissue. And it actually Access to bats in their natural hibernacula isn't always easy. Sometimes they're very large clusters that are way higher than you could access to treat with traditional treatments. They're very sensitive animals. And so they have been susceptible to toxicity from some of the things that have been previously tried. So that's one of the good sides of this product is that you don't actually have to handle them. My hopes are that we can stay off the regional extinction that's been predicted in that 20, 30 years from now, uh, there will still be bats in the sky in Missouri and Georgia and Pennsylvania catching insects under lampposts.